What's cool of War Kratos? How about one that's one quarter scale? Today we're going to be having a look at the new NECA Toys God of War Kratos Ultimate Collector's One Quarter Scale Action Figure. So exactly how tall is the quarter scale Kratos? It's gonna involve me stretching my arms here. The figure is, if you can hopefully see it, 18 or about 18 and a quarter inches in height. And what better way to describe how tall this guy is? By bringing in the standard seven inch tall Kratos that we've already had a look at. If we put him next to him, he is extremely dwarfed by the quarter scale Kratos. He goes to about maybe the mid thigh area of Kratos here, the larger scale Kratos that is. Now looking at this Kratos and comparing him to the larger version, it doesn't look as if much has been changed. At the very least, it looks like NECA has, if anything, just scaled up the Kratos here, which a lot of times most figure companies actually produce larger scale figures like this and if anything, usually shrink them down uh, to something like this size. But it is, it is quite entertaining to see how big this one is versus the standard. And this almost just even looks like a small kid's toy um, based on how big exactly it is against the quarter scale here. To come included with the one quarter scale Kratos, you also get this backdrop diorama, which does take a little bit of time to put together. It is made of a, of a cardboard material, so it's not the most durable of things, but it's pretty impressive that it's large. It's, well, it's, it takes up a lot of space. You've got the backdrop here, as well as the God of War located, the name God of War at the top there, and you've got Atreus fe featured on the front here uh, at the front of the boat. Uh, go ahead and then take Kratos, which may actually be a little difficult to get him into frame. And there is the one quarter scale Kratos with his backdrop. Again, it looks good. You may already have uh, space restraints to be displaying a one quarter scale figure. Then imagining on top of that, you've got this giant back cardboard displayer uh, to go along with the figure. Commending, of course, NECA for the taking the time to go above and beyond just simply releasing the figure. It is really a lot space-wise to be able to fit in the frame. In fact, I'm actually surprised I was able to get all of this into frame when shooting this review. There's the bottom end of it there, and there's the top. It's neat that Atreus is actually further to the front, in the forefront here, because it gives it more of that sense of depth. Um, Kratos does ultimately kind of look like he's just standing on water, which I don't think translates as well. If they have maybe found the way to make the boat the, uh, the boat down here to actually look like it could come down. Um, I've tried folding a few things on it, but ultimately it just doesn't look like he's part of the boat. Instead, it looks like he's just kind of standing in the water. Again, well done to NECA for including this, but just by its size alone, I just probably won't end up putting it out on display. One, one extra little bonus thing I found actually on the back of the packaging, which initially I thought this was the exclusive diorama. I was going to say, wow, that's 
pretty small. But it's funny that this was on the back. If you take out the cardboard insert that would have housed the figure, this was actually on the very back of the cardboard. It was just this separate mountain. Luckily for us, this is not the exclusive backdrop that was included. Okay, so why don't we start with his accessories. He comes with Leviathan, his axe. Uh, just a larger representation. There it is next to next to the seven inch version of Kratos. There's the two axes. Again, there's not really that much different between them. Both the blades have a nice metallic silver applied to them. Even like the little markings and uh, little st uh, stones that have been placed in the top blade of the axe are featured on both the small and the large. You've got the scroll work both present on the handles, as well as the roped off sections here. Obviously, it gets a, it's a little cleaner on the larger one versus the smaller one that's a little harder to paint. But they are almost identical to one another. Uh, this one here, I thought could, yeah, it, it can detach if memory serves me correctly. This one doesn't seem like you can detach it. So instead, instead of just detaching some thinning through Kratos's hand, the larger one, you basically have to just pry the fingers away and then fit Leviathan in place. So to get into his hand, we're just gonna kind of just take the four fingers and pry them out just enough that I can then get the ax handle in place. There we go. It's a little bit trickier because everything is of a larger scale. You can see that he perfectly, though, holds the axe in hand. Like with these smaller figures, well, you can also take the handle of the axe and fit it through the back loop on Kratos' torso and store it in place if you don't want to display him in, at least with the axe in his hand here. Next, he gets his small knife. And even then, saying small knife and looking at it on a quarter scale level, just comparing it to the smaller version. Again, the handles are very similar to one another, although the, the scroll work featured on the handle here that's been carved in, omitted on the smaller blade. So that's one of the benefits that the larger figures can inherit, is that they do have a little bit more space to accommodate some details that the smaller one just can't accommodate. Uh, again, you've got that airbrushing effect where it's it looks like it's brown and it kind of transitions itself to a very bright... Uh, white blade here. Uh, the blade is not sharp, although it does have a bit of an edge to it. I can't imagine you would cut yourself with it, but that being said, just be very careful. Spinning the figure around, he's got a holster here for the knife, and the knife can just actually, you might want to just move the arm out of the way slightly. The knife fits right into the back here, just like that. Last but certainly not least, Kratos gets his giant shield. And giant is an understatement. I mean, it's the size of a dinner plate or small dessert plate at the very least. It is beautifully sculpted and exquisitely painted here with the individual inner areas here painted in a cranberry uh, red. The rest of it is just splendidly colored in this metallic gold. And amongst the gold, you've got like the darker wash areas here where they've used almost like a, a brownish black color and they've just kind of dry brushed areas around there just to make the details pop. I know, I know what you're thinking. There's the smaller version so you guys can see. By comparing the two, you can almost even as well notice that it seems more of just a, a rougher a dry brushing that's been added to the smaller shield versus the larger. The larger gets a little bit more of a softer uh, application of that paint, whereas the smaller one looks like it's a little bit more uh, sponged on. We spin the shields around. There's the two shields side by side. Again, the details are there. You get a little bit more happening here on the larger version, which the smaller version unfortunately just doesn't have. Attaching the shield to Kratos is the same. You just want to take this section right here. You'll notice this one is the one that you need to remove because it's got almost like a little half moon shape underneath it. Just enough that you get your fingernail in there. You want to pop that out. And then take the shield. And there's almost a, you see a little line right there. There's a step. goes down like this. And it tells you right away which way this should be facing. So the shield should be facing this way. And you'll go ahead and just attach it 
just into that little slotted spot that we've just now made. Uh, just slot that into place, actually. Yeah, I did have it the right way. Slot that into place. Not thinking it could be possible yet, the shield man just to add some extra size to Kratos here. It may also make things a little bit more difficult to display him, especially if you have him on a shelf, because the shield is going to give him, again, some extra spacing that's going to be required for him. So let's start with some of the close-up details here of one-quarter scale Kratos. The head sculpt is really good. In fact, if I bring in the smaller version Kratos, it looks as if it is, yes, an exact carbon copy to the same one that we looked at before in the smaller scale. It's not to say that there was really anything wrong with the sculpt on the head. In fact, just taking really the exact same core figure and making it larger, I don't think there's anything really wrong with that because the figure was already good to start off with. One thing of noticeable difference, though, between the bigger one and the smaller one is that the smaller one didn't seem to have the additional kind of reddish-brown shading around the bottom lobes, the, uh, not lobes, the bottom eyelids there on Kratos. It looks almost to be a bit of a bruising that's happening on his face, which doesn't actually seem to be the case if we bring in... My camera is having to work harder here to focus but the smaller one didn't actually have that. Instead, they just went in and they gave it almost a wet wash there of almost a black color, whereas the, Kratos, the larger Kratos, there goes the camera, sorry camera, uh, the larger Kratos does have that, the extra, almost like kind of brownish, kind of reddish brown uh, rust color underneath his eyes here. The beard, uh, one of the new things on the Kratos from the new God of War game, is exquisitely detailed. The individual hairs that you can see are curled in, actually sculpted in different directions, so it does have a, like a natural flow to it. Uh, the additional uh, added white adds some age, some much needed age here to Kratos. If you watch my smaller scale or regular scale Kratos review, I won't bore you with a lot of the details here on Kratos. It's not to say that I'm abandoning all the individual, like the smaller aspects of the figure, such as his belt and stuff like that. But we've kind of touched base on that a lot already in the smaller scale figure review. So basically all of what you're getting or benefited from getting with the smaller version of Kratos gets here in uh, just a much larger scale. So Kratos has the, uh, the strapped off, uh, almost like riding boots that he's wearing here. Uh, of course, his slacks, his front leather stitched together cloth, loincloth almost. And of course, he's got the belt wrapped around here. We spin around the back of the figure, which is really where you get a lot of the extra stuff happening. The, the, the horn, the pouch here, again, the holster for the knife, and uh, the bag on the side there as well. The fur, the top fur area that makes up his, well, the back of his shoulder plate, again, very nicely done here. You've got, almost got like that faux leather happening here. The gold, of course, of the loop that's going to hold the uh, the axe. And then the individual patches here that make up his shoulder guard. This whole top shoulder area here, this top section here, is separate from the rest of Kratos. So you can move it around a little bit. We spin the figure around again. And again, like all of this is a separate component. I guess in theory, you could take it off from the torso. I don't know why you would necessarily want to, but at the very least, if you did, if I just move that up slightly, you can see that his entire torso is painted underneath that. Again, you really may not want to remove this at all, but if you wanted to, it does look like he is completely detailed and painted underneath. Normally, the one-quarter scale NECA figures tend to be of figures that they can't release in smaller scale. Here, on the other hand, we're getting an example where basically it's the smaller version of Kratos that we've already received just blown up to a bigger scale. I guess when you are having a look at the smaller scale figure and the larger scale Kratos, it would lend itself a little bit that it would be nice that if they had used a different head sculpt, just so that it does separate it from the, the smaller figure that we already had a look at. Could, perhaps he could have had a grimace, he could have had a yelling face or something like that, so that it would be slightly different then from the smaller one that we've already picked up.
looking at his posability, it would be probably no surprise that the figure has the exact same posability as the smaller figure, just in a bigger scale. Man, rotating the head around does lend itself to the head popping out of the socket, but luckily it just sits on a very giant ball joint. Uh, I do have to mention though that of course, uh, being this is a larger figure, it is a little bit more difficult to rotate things on them. Like the joints are bigger, they're a little more stiff, um, such as like elbows, for example, you may notice that the figure right out of packaging is very tricky to kind of get to rotate because I, again, everything on him is so much bigger than the smaller variety. So his arms hinge outward and then again, you've got the forward and back rotation happening there. He's got the swivel on the bicep. You may find also a lot of creaking and squeaking as you are moving joints on this guy. He does have a hinge on the elbow. I can find myself bending the, the bottom hinge but I struggle a little bit getting the top hinge to bend, but he does have a double bend on the elbow. It's just really, really tight on this particular figure. His hands rotate all the way around and you've got the hinge happening back and forth. Ball joints doesn't necessarily exist here. Well, it does, but it does on the lower half, closer actually to his waist. So the ball joint actually works to allow the top torso to swivel and then also crunch, but then again, that joint is sitting kind of around here and not further up. Lastly, when it comes to his legs, his legs hinge out to about there. That's about as far out as they're gonna go. He has a top swivel cut on the top portion of his thigh that connects basically to that socket. He has a double hinge on the knee. Uh, the feet also can rotate all the way around. And he's also got a hinge happening back and forth on the feet. Uh, he does have peggles on the undersides of his feet, which I do find a bit laughable. I mean, he doesn't really have a display stand to start off with. Even if you found a display stand to accommodate a figure this big, the stand would only be about this. In fact, the stand would likely be about the size of the seven inch tall Kratos. So really, I don't see how that would benefit the figure from standing. I guess it would give him a, a larger footprint, but as you can see, the figure stands perfectly fine. The quarter scale God of War Kratos answers the call of collectors that wanted a larger version to the smaller seven inch Kratos that was already super posable, super detailed and super painted. This is just this figure, that figure blown up to a much larger size. As I've mentioned in previous reviews, these larger quarter scale figures are not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, again, the one biggest restraint to this figure is he's just big. You may not have the space necessarily afforded to accommodate a quarter scale figure like this, but if you are a fan of God of War and you manage to pick yourself up the smaller seven inch variety of Kratos and just want a larger version of him, you're essentially getting it right here. A, still a super cool looking release from NECA, just much bigger. He's not quite the same sort of category as some of the other quarter scale figures that are exclusive to being quarter scale. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie figures, for example, which I will be doing a review of eventually, uh, those are specifically for quarter scale. You may never get them in a smaller seven inch variety. Kratos here is sort of just a blown up version of the smaller scale. We've kind of also gotten these things with uh, the upcoming Jason is gonna be also a, a quarter scale. And we've had that with the Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy's. So again, Pick this figure up if you loved the smaller scale and just wanted something a little bit bigger. But again, space may be something that you may have to now allow to fit something as super cool and super big as the quarter scale Kratos here. Today we were having a look at the NECA Toys God of War. This was the collector's edition quarter scale. Uh, this was the quarter scale Kratos. Very cool looking figure. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. If you guys also want to check out some more quarter scale figure reviews on this channel. I don't do a lot, but uh, the ones I have picked up, I have to admit, I really, really did like, especially the uh, Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman. You'll find all of that in my playlist called NECA quarter scale figure reviews or quarter scale reviews. More videos will be coming your way, guys. As always, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you guys next time.